Hello and welcome back to our 100,000 subscriber special of going back in time to our door videos that we first started the channel with. In this episode, we're going to continue where we left off last time and make our door the ability to open and close with inputs as well as automatically open and close too. So let's jump in and have a look at how we accomplish this. Okay, so last time we were here, we made the open door timeline event, which will open the door based upon what settings we give it. Um, we have got things like direction of movement and distance of movement we want to do and max hinge distance we want to do as well. We're going to promote those to a variable so we can change it per door as well. So we're going to do open angle, we'll call this one. And I want to promote the max distance here. We'll call it slide distance. And direction here, we'll promote and do slide direction. Now, as you are going through adding variables to your different actors, it would be a good idea to organize yourself as you go. So at the moment, we've got a number of variables. We've got one, two, three, four, five variables here in our variable list. So let's put these into a category rather than just default. So I'm going to go to is locked, and on category here, we're going to just type in a value of door settings and all of these can go into door settings I'll drag that in just drag them up okay compile save so if i were to now make all these editable by clicking the little eyeball icon next to them i should now see those options available to me in our door setting so it's locked it's sliding door open angle slide distance and slide direction just realized i spelt slide direction without the e we'll just fix that there we go excellent but so far we've just got a door opening as it is now the second thing we want to do is we want to close the door so closing the door is basically the same as this, but in reverse. And as you may notice on the timeline, there is a reverse pin. So let's create another custom event called on door close. And we're gonna plug that into the reverse pin. Now you may remember last time I mentioned the idea that whenever you create a function, you need to think of conditions as well. Why should that function play? Well, same goes for events. Why should we ever call on door open? Why should we say on door close should ever be called? So think about the conditions that these could have and how we can manipulate that. So on door open, we've already got something we can use this for. We can do a check for is locked. And we put that into a branch like so. And make it so that it is locked will happen only on false. So door open will be when is locked is not true. But what about door close? What kind of setting could we have for that? What kind of condition could we have for that? Well, we could have another branch. And we'll put that as a condition. We'll promote and say uh, rem remain open. And if remain open is false, that's when it reverses. So if remain open is turned on to be true, it should stay open and won't ever close. Again, we'll make these editable and put them in the right category in our variable list. So let's test that out. Um, when we done testing last time, we used begin overlap for the box. This time we're gonna use end overlap. And we'll do on door close. Now, the settings for this is it will say remain open is true and it's sliding door is true. I'm going to turn remain open false and hit play. So I can go through the door, it'll slide open, and I leave, it'll close. Now, at the moment, you're seeing this sort of weird behavior going on here. Now, the reason why you're seeing this weird behavior is because of our begin and end overlaps. If we go to the component begin overlap and end overlap, these are firing whenever any other component or actor begins overlapping or ends overlapping. 
the door itself is crossing that overlap block. So it's triggering both of these at the same time. We want that to be only the case to when the player enters this box. So let's do a condition for these. The condition is going to be checking whether the other actor is equal to the player character. And we'll put that on that condition there. And we do the same thing. So we copy and paste that for the end overlap. Okay, so now if we test it out, we should see that we don't get that weird just read behavior. As you can see there, much smoother. And when I leave, it closes. Excellent. And just to show that remain open works, if I turn on remain open, hit play. When I walk away, it's going to stay as it is. Okay, so next up is the locking and unlocking behavior. So we can go to our door actor. And I'm going to create a function on here for unlock door. And another one for lock door. Now, a good way of thinking about functions and variables is to think of them combined together. So if we look at is locked, I want to think of two functions that are going to, or as many functions as I want, really, that will manage this variable for is locked. So unlock door and lock door is going to mostly be in charge of this door being locked or not. So on lock door, we're going to drag out is locked and turn on is locked. On unlock door, we're going to do is locked and leave it false. Now these are pretty simple, but there's more we can do here. For example, do we want our door to open as soon as it is unlocked or do we have to interact with it again or walk through its area again, whatever it may be. So what I'm going to do here on the variable list is add another variable and it'll be another boolean saying open on unlock. And again, that'd be a door setting we'll just put in. Now on unlock door, I'm going to put in this open on unlock and close, uh, put that as a condition. And if it's true, I want to call my on door open so I can either search for it or I can drag out the on door open event that's in our blueprint settings over here on the left. If it's false, then nothing's going to happen. It's only going to do it if the door is been told to open and unlock. And that begin another variable we're going to expose as a instance variable. Now we can do a full interaction system on the outdoor here. Um, but we're going to skip a step here because what I'm actually going to do is show you how to just enable input on the door and make the door work with enable input only. So let's go ahead to our event graph. Now on here, we've got our open door, closed door and overlaps. We also need to be able to turn off and on our different inputs. So on begin overlap, after we, uh, we rather than doing door open, we are going to have in here the enable input. And this requires a player controller. So just search for get player controller. And then on the bottom one for the end overlap, we're going to disable input. Again, this needs the player controller. As for the on open door and door close, this will change based upon another setting that we want to make. Do we want our door to open automatically or be interacted with? So we're going to go to variables and do is automatic. Again, make it editable, put it into our door settings. I'm going to drag it out and put in uh, on door open. So if it's true and it's automatic, the door will open. If it's not true, then that's when I will actually want to enable this input, disable input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect it from here. And instead, it's going to go over here on the false of the branch. 
So if it's not automatic, enable the input for the door, make it listen out for inputs. And we can do the same here for our bottom line here. So we'll just drag that in. Whoops. And on disable input, we'll go to the false and true will go to door close. Now enable input and disable input mean the door is that can be added onto our input stack. And to make the enhanced input actions work for the door here, we need to have it enabled input. Disabling input means that door won't interact with stuff when we walk away from it. So first of all, let's go ahead and create the input for our interaction. So we'll find that in the first person folder in inputs and go to actions. And in here, we're going to go ahead and create an input action. IA underscore for input action and we'll do interact. We then go back to our mapping context for IMC default in this case. We're going to open this up and we're going to add the mapping for interact. And we'll set that to E. Now I can add on to here IA interact. And I'll see the enhanced input action for interact. And we'll open this up. And I've got a whole video about enhanced input action. So if you want to learn more about how, what all this stuff means and you want to go into a lot more detail, please do check that out. I won't be going through it in too much detail here uh, because it's not the focus for today. But by means, check out those videos if you want to learn more. The main thing we want to take note of here is the triggered. So we want it to trigger and then take it to open the door. So we're going to go on door open and triggered. But hang on, what if we want to push the button to close the door? Well, let's say I know to check now whether or not the door was open or closed. And it will do different actions based upon its current behavior. So what I'm going to do here is going to create yet another boolean and do it call and call it is door open. This one won't be in a instance variable. It won't be editable. Um, it's going to remain private that belongs to this, this door. And we're going to drag that out and use it just for this. So we put is door open, triggered. And if it is true and the door is open, I want to close the door otherwise i want to open the door and it is door open needs to be a variable that we are setting and changing based upon our door opening timeline so if door opening is finished it will call this finished pin here now i don't know whether it's going to finish going forwards or backwards i need to determine that and we've got this handy little direction pin we can use to help us so i'm going to drag out our direction here and do switch on timeline direction drag in our finished into the switched and if it's forwards i'm going to set is still open to be true if it's backwards i'm going to set it down to false so let's try this out okay so now i'm going to turn off remain open as well and hit play hit e and I can hit E again to close it. I have to walk away, that input will be disabled, and the E is not going to do anything. Okay. Now we can extend this out further and say, do we want it to close automatically or open automatically? Maybe we only want it to open by uh, an input and have it closed on an uh, in, uh, automatic door. So. Let's add that option in here. So I've got is automatic. I'm going to rename this one um, is automatic open. And I'm going to make a duplicate of that. And call this one is automatic closed. Now is automatic open here is going to determine the opening on the begin overlap. Um, but over here on the end overlap, I'm going to change is automatic close to that option you just drag that pin onto this pin and it will change it for you double check and make sure that your automatic close is instance editable it should be if you duplicated it 
hit compile and go back to our scene now i can add further command system i could say i want you to close automatically so is automatic close turn that on hit play and when i walk and leave this thing it'll close behind me and by putting as many options as possible in this list down here it means the designer after me can come in and make whatever they want with the one door actor I've made. I don't want to go in and make 50 different types of doors. I ideally want to make one or two and give the designer freedom to control how they want their door to behave. So there you go. We can now open and close a door with a player input. And what we're going to do in the next episode is add keys to our door. So when we open the door, we can only open it if we have the key and it's locked. So let's go through that in the next episode, which you can find right now of, on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. From just $1 a month, you get access to all our videos early before anyone else. A massive thank you again to everyone who has subscribed and helped us reaching over 100,000 subscribers. It means amazing, like, means so much to me. Thank you so much. It's uh, really is truly amazing. Thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already, and I'll see you next time.